Frost deck here today with a Lenovo Think Server TS140 overview. So I got this bat, this uh, server on sale probably about two months ago with the original intention to use it as a file server and a Plex server for uh, my roommate and I. And so we, we caught this on sale and it looked like a good deal and the specs were pretty much meeting up with what we needed. We wanted to have a quad core so we were able to stream our 1080p video uh, simultaneously at the same time without any transcoding hitches. So I'm going to go over this this specific one we have today. So there's two different main models with the uh, Lenovo ThinkServer TS140. You have an i3 version and then a Xeon version. And then they both vary on some other things such as hard drives that come with it if it has an operating system installed and other, other things of that sort. So today here we've got the Xeon E3 1225 V3 processor, four gigs of ECC air correcting RAM. Uh, I actually got a config that had a 500 gig uh, WD enterprise grade drive in it and a DVD-ROM drive that you can see on the front here and then it's got a PSU uh, I think it's a 280 watt power supply 80 uh, plus bronze so that's a pretty good plus and it did not come with any OS I ended up loading on a Windows Server 2012 OS key that I had laying around from my school and so let's break this thing open um, came in a pretty nice package not anything special, not really anything to complain about. It had a power cable that came with it, and then some owner manuals. I had never bought any sort of pre-built server before, so it was interesting to see it. They call it a 5U. I don't really know who would mount this on a rack necessarily. I guess you could lay it down in your rack if you wanted to, but I, I consider this more of a desktop, sit under the desk kind of server. So let's go ahead and open it up. Actually, let's check out the back real quick. So on the back, it this was another requirement we wanted to have is he was going to use it um, as a desktop before he built his own for a little bit. So we wanted to have DisplayPort out. So this actually comes with two DisplayPorts, which I find kind of odd for a server. I mean, it's super nice, don't get me wrong. VGA, you got a serial port, and then you've got four super speed USBs, so USB 3.0s, two USB 2.0s, Intel, NIC, and then some uh, audio. So we actually took these slots out because we had a GTX 970 sitting in here. Uh, for a little bit while he before he built his so then you see the power supply overall the back pretty clean I really like that it had the display port that was a big sell for us so let's go ahead and actually open it up all right so first thing you notice when I open it up was this is kind of cool to have they have as a service information page so this shows you where everything is on the motherboard uh, whatever buttons and the LEDs mean on the front all that different stuff it's kind of a nice feature to have on there and it, it actually has helped me on figuring out, you know, which fan ports I needed to have things plugged into when I tore the system down originally. So it's an easy release, which I find really nice, awesome implementation of this. Just push this button in, slide the panel off, you're good to go. So it's pretty much in its standard configuration here. Let me get the camera adjusted for us. So basically, it's in its standard configuration as we see it. The big thing that I have added is two 4 terabyte Seagate NAS drives. Caught them on sale for $109 a piece. We decided to grab those. We were originally in the market for two terabyte drives, but since the four terabytes were a little over 100, we decided that'd give us expandability in the future since we already were approaching around one terabyte in files. You got your heatsink for the Xeon right here. You have one gig DIM, or the one, one DIM for the four gigs of the ECC. You got a PCIe slot, times 16 by 1, and another times 16. That's really nice for a server. Um, you can put in your RAID card, whatever you plan to do with this. I mean, this, this is an awesome budget gaming build if that's something that you're into. Uh, the only thing you need to update is the power supply. I'll get to that here in a little bit since we had to do something like that. And then you got your two uh, hard drive cages that kind of built in right here. They've got a fan for those, it, it blows each direction, which is nice to keep the hard drives cool. I put the four terabytes here. Originally my 500 gig OS drive was mounted right here, but I took it out and actually put it into um, one of these slots up here. So going on to that is these slots up here, um, each one of these has a tray you can put in. So you te technically have a total of five, three and a half inch bays you can put in here. Since you have a slimline DVD on the front, you can put one up here, one here, and then one here. So I put the OS drive um, right here into this mount, as you can see on the back side there. 
this in here and have it hooked up. And so that, that kind of added the convenience. I didn't really have plans on taking that out over. If I ever needed to get um, any data off these, I wanted to have them so they're easy to pull out. So they just pull on these little thing, these cages and they slide right out. So plenty of uh, expandability. I mean, if that was one complaint I'd have to say about this specific box is the three and a half inch bays are kind of a pain in the butt because you do have to unscrew a lot of stuff to get to these up here and take the front panel off, which breaks down really easy. But I digress. Anyway, so then it's a pretty standard motherboard layout. You're gonna have a total of five SATA slots. So um, plan accordingly if you plan on doing any sort of RAID setup or any amount of hard drives, you have five in here. So one's gonna be taken out by the slimline if you opt to keep that plugged in. And then you're gonna have basically four other ones. So I have my two four terabytes and then the OS drive. So I have one free SATA slot right now. And then you got your front panel 3.0 USB, which is nice to have up there just in case you need to throw a flash drive in there to get some files off of it. And heat sink's nice. So then let's get to the caveat with the power supply. So you do get the 80 plus bronze power supply with this, which is definitely a nice feature, especially considering your server. It's going to be running for a long time. That efficiency really actually matters in this kind of thing. But the really big downside, and it is a server related thing. I mean, this isn't necessarily something they're trying to proprietary get you on but it isn't a standard ATX connector you know it's not it's not your standard 24 pin it's actually a 12 pin connector I believe or maybe 14 anyway so we actually had to get an adapter for it and so there's a 10 pin here and then or 12 whatever the pin 14 pin and then you have your SATA power coming off the motherboard so there's literally two cables that come from the power supply, which is super nice convenience wise. You got your four pin here for your CPU and then this other pin, this other 14 pin that plugs directly in the motherboard. And then your SATA actually comes out of the motherboard. So power goes into the motherboard and then it's handled and spit out from there. So what we ended up doing is we found an adapter online. Uh, that I think it was like maybe six bucks or something. It wasn't very expensive at all. And we picked that up and that allowed us to uh, drop in one of the of course, Harry Power Supplies I had laying around in order to drive the 970 that we put in here for the slight amount of time. And it worked out fine, but it was definitely very, very crowded in here with a full non-modular power supply. So if you were um, considering getting this for maybe a budget gaming build, if you do see it on sale, then that is something to think about. You will need to get an adapter for it and upgrade the power supply. However, I've seen some that do have a 400 watt or 500 watt power supply that comes included. but. That's kind of one of the things you need to watch out for because these come in a ton of different configs and uh, your mileage may vary on what you get. Overall, this uh, computer has been actually super nice um, since we've been using that server. I mean, it's used as a desktop there. It's finally finding its final form and its server use. And I think overall, this has been a great buy. Uh, the value for what you get with this is honestly second to none. Um, there's a Dell offering. I don't know the exact number it might be a t20 if i remember correctly but i'm not 100 percent sure that's kind of like the the brother to this on the dell side of things and uh, between those two those these are some great deals if you can get this on sale when you can't get it on sale you know sub 300 dollars definitely something i would look into picking up if you're in the market for a new server of any sort if you guys have any questions be sure to drop a comment down there for me thumbs up if you liked it thumbs down if you didn't like it I'm trying to work on the stability of my videos Originally I was using no tripod. I have a tripod now, but I'm still using it kind of mobily because it's not exactly tall enough for what I need it for. Thanks for watching, guys.